Can you imagine a place where there's a sinking metropolitan city, a hill with corpses on display, and people who eat snakes to get energized? This is the dark side of Indonesia. Indonesia is an archipelago country with over 17,500 islands and 300 ethnic groups, which fall into three broad divisions. Inland wet rice cultivators such as Java, the coastal trading, farming, and fishing people such as Sumatra, and the inland societies of shifting cultivators such as the Dayak communities of Borneo. The Austronesians began migrating to Indonesia in the 3rd millennium BCE, before Common Era, but the country was heavily influenced by traders from around the world. This resulted in the spread of many religions in Indonesia, with Islam being the majority. The Dutch established control in Indonesia from the 17th century to 1942 when the Japanese invaded. When World War II ended, the country, led by Sukarno as the first president, declared independence on August 17, 1945. The Dutch granted independence with a nominal union until it was dissolved in 1954. It is now a presidential republic with an elected legislator. Indonesia is now the largest economy in Southeast Asia, with a GDP of 1,319.1 billion USD in 2022, which represents 0.59% of the total GDP in the world. On the other hand, the country still has room to grow in terms of its GDP per capita, ranking fifth in Southeast Asia with 4,783.3 USD. This puts them just below Thailand and above Vietnam. Overall, their economy is steadily advancing with a growth of 5.03%. Their economy might be getting stronger, but they have a looming catastrophic issue on their hands, their sinking capital city. Indonesia's capital city is not only a metropolitan, but it's also the fastest sinking city in the world. Some experts predict that it could be entirely submerged by 2050. The north of the city, which is the closest to the ocean, has sunk 2.5 meters in the last 10 years, and this trend continues with a rate of 25 centimeters every year. Almost half of the city is now sitting below sea level. This evidence is apparent with office buildings and fishing villages left abandoned and luxury homes by the sea cracking and on the verge of disintegration. But that's not all. Jakarta is sinking faster than most cities due to overpopulation and excessive extraction of groundwater to use as drinking water. This leaves the ground underneath empty, resulting in further collapsing. Plenty of initiatives have been done, such as tree planting to catch rainwater and building a gigantic seawall called the Great Garuda. But experts have expressed concerns that this will do nothing. That's why the country has turned to a last-ditch effort and is now planning to move its capital city to another island entirely in Borneo. What would happen to Jakarta is still up in the air. It seems that Jakarta isn't the only city experiencing issues. The country's most well-known tourist destination, the island of Bali, is also facing environmental challenges. Some parts of the island are a far cry from the beautiful pictures you see on social media. A tourist staying at the hotel in Changu showed that her accommodation is only aesthetically pleasing on one side. Her hostel was surrounded by muddy vacant land and buildings under construction filled with trash. Overpopulation and excessive tourism are to blame for this situation. This is not exclusive to Bali, though. Indonesia is also home to one of the most polluted rivers in the world. Chitaram. This is due to industrial waste and chemical pollution from surrounding factories. The river contains dangerous medical contaminants that could harm communities living in the area. Around 60% of people living near the river have persistent skin infections, which could turn into skin cancer. Hazardous chemicals even caused many fish to die. Just searching for an image of the river will lead you to a picture of a river with loads of trash and floating fish. Most people work a day job in the office, but not volcano miners in Mount Ejen. These people work in tough conditions mining sulfur up the mountain that starts from midnight. The air is dark from volcanic fumes that burn your eyes and sinuses with a sour smell. But these miners don't even use a paper mask. The men then work in the dark, using long metal poles to break off chunks of yellow sulfuric crust from the volcano crater floor. They would have to hike back down with chunks of sulfur inside a basket casually put on their shoulders. It's a back-breaking journey that pays merely $12 a day. Experts say that prolonged exposure can lead to erosion of teeth, eye irritation, or inflammation of the nose, throat, and bronchial tubes. But for the time being, 
the men at Kawa Aijin have no choice but to bear the grunt work to provide for their families. Sulfur mining is not the only issue Indonesia is facing. Being the largest producer of nickel poses a threat to the country's natural resources and people's health. Nickel is an important part of the electric revolution, as it's one of the main components of batteries. That is why many companies are now racing to Indonesia's nickel mines. Plenty of Sulawesi's forests are being chopped down to make way for mining companies decimating nature. Another negative impact is the runoff from the factories that have contaminated the soil and coastal waters. This caused skin conditions in surrounding communities, and the sea turned bright red. Fishermen are no longer able to make a living, and people are having issues with bathing water. If you ever wanted to comment on a post or create content about Indonesia, you need to be ready to bear the consequences. Indonesian netizens are well known for their habit of posting negative comments on social media. The country has the lowest digital civility index in Southeast Asia according to the Microsoft survey. Even Microsoft decided to close the comments section to the overwhelming influx of negative comments from Indonesian netizens after it announced the result. One case point is a YouTube actor, Boy William, who made a small comment about Blackpink's concert. He merely said that he thought that one of the members wasn't performing their best. Indonesian netizens attacked Boy William's comment section and he even lost his Instagram account due to people reporting it as spam. He had to post an apology video admitting his statement was a mistake just to get his account back and finally get rid of the haters. Another horrible case is of a West Java-based musician who posted a banner of him being nominated as a legislative candidate on his social media account. People felt the punk band frontman had sold out to the government and started harassing him in the comments section. Some even tweeted that they would shoot the singer and throw Molotov cocktails should the band appear on stage again. Due to this, people around him have condemned and refused to work with him and feeling dehumanized. Take extra care when you're riding or driving in Indonesia because you might encounter bagels. Bagels are violent thieves that assault motorists which could lead to severe injuries or death. These thieves operate with their motorcycles, speeding away as they grab onto your belongings. They often work in pairs with one driving the motorcycle and one stealing. One case example is a recent robbery in Medan. A student was slashed to death where he went out to buy food on his motorcycle. This was because he resisted when the robbers were stealing his motorcycle. Avoid walking and riding at night in quiet, straight streets as that's where robberies often happen. The straighter the street, the easier for the bagels to speed away. Car owners are not safe from road robberies as well, thanks to the infamous Red Axe gang in the capital city of Jakarta. These criminals smash car windows using red axes to rob drivers with helmets to cover their faces. That's why it's not advisable to show your mobile phone or other belongings while driving, and it's best to keep your window tinted to the darkest shade. The gang had its heyday in the early 2000s up to 2009, and their leader was apprehended in 2014, but its influence is still felt today with copycat robberies looming at large. Have you ever seen something that's gory but beautiful at the same time? If you haven't, you should visit the famous hillside grave of Tana Taraja. On the walls of a steep hill, you'll see coffins hanging from cracks and lifelike wooden sculptures complete with clothing. These sculptures represent the dead who are buried there. This is because the people believe that the dead can bring their wealth into the afterlife, so they put buried treasure along with the bodies. The coffins are placed on a hill to prevent grave robbers and to make sure the journey to Nirvana is shorter for the deceased. The funeral procession is also something of a celebration where families can spend up to 30,000 USD for rituals such as slaughtering dozens if not hundreds of water buffaloes and pigs because they believe that buffaloes are vehicles to the afterlife. Another unique cultural celebration in Indonesia is the Flat Horse or Kuda Lumping Festival. This is when dancers ride a horse made out of woven bamboo. Within minutes, the riders will be possessed and shake to begin the ritual and become a horse. When the dancers are in a trance, they claim to feel no pain. Performers could be as young as 12 years old. Locals believe that this is a depiction of a national hero, Prince Dipanagoro, who fought the Dutch for independence. This dance is widely performed in East Java and Do Jakarta during traditional ceremonies. If you ever travel to Jakarta, you might be tempted to try the street food, but one particular street food is not for the faint-hearted, cobra snake eating. One of the most famous spots is called King Cobra Restaurant, 
where you'll find walls lined up with live cobras ready to be slaughtered. The restaurant staff will catch the cobra you pick, then cut off his head to drain the blood into cups. Then the blood is mixed with Chinese rice wine so that it's safe to drink. It is said that drinking blood is good for virility and energy. The cook will then prepare the snake meat in various ways for you, from stir-fried to noodle soups. People say that the taste is good and similar to beef, the bones can be tedious to remove. Bali is the well-known travel destination in Indonesia, but it's also known for a social phenomenon, young Indonesian women marrying older Western men. Although it's not always the case, foreigners looking for wives on the island of God should take extra care. Often, these men will marry their Indonesian girlfriends within a few months after they meet the young girls. Most of the time, the reason is financial security, as the women expect their husbands to fund their lifestyles. One particular case is of an Austrian expat who married an Indonesian woman 10 years his junior. Only two years after the wedding, they divorced. His ex-wife was able to take all his investment properties in Indonesia, as they're all under her name. Lonely men looking for love and companionship are easy marks for these girls. These men have local girlfriends who would ask to be given thousands of dollars in spending money each month. Some girls are even moonlighting as upmarket escorts and have multiple boyfriends. Although Indonesia is a beautiful country with stunning landscapes, rich cultures, and warm hospitality, it has its share of dark sides. 